Manufacturing Dental Alloy The particles of the amalgam alloy may be formed by two methods. The first method used to produce lath-cut dental amalgam powder, is by grinding an ingot of metal into milling machine. Such amalgam alloys are called lathe-cut alloys. The second method used to produce dental amalgam particles, is to spray molten metal into a chamber of inert gas. The droplets solidify and produce spherical alloys. Some products are a mixture of both lathe-cut and spherical particles, these products are called admixed or blended alloys. Now, let's see how to manufacture lathe cut amalgam alloy. In order to make alloy powder, all the metal ingredients are heated and protected from oxidation, until melted. After that molten metal is cooled and form that an ingot is made. After that homogenizing heat treatment is done to re-establish the equilibrium phase. In homogenizing heat treatment, ingot is placed in an oven, and, heated to a temperature below the solidus temperature, to allow diffusion of the atom to occur, and the phases to reach an equilibrium. An ingot of a silver tin alloy has a cord structure and contains non-homogeneous grains of varying composition. Ingot is lathe cut to produce the particles, and, ball milled to reduce their size. As we have seen earlier, before cutting ingot into the smaller particles, homogenizing heat treatment is done. It is done simply to overcome the coring and segregation in the solid ingot. Here we need to understand these two terminology, coring and segregation. Coring is a condition, when a heated alloy, cools in non-equilibrium conditions. Segregation means separation of things from the group, in this case, we don't want all the metals to get separated. We want them homogenized. To re-establish the equilibrium phase relationship, the ingot is placed in an oven, and heated at temperature below solidus for a sufficient time to allow diffusion of the atoms to occur. The manner in which the ingot is cooled influences the proportion of phases present in the ingot after cooling. If the ingot is withdrawn from the heat treatment oven rapidly and then quickly quenched, the phase distribution remains essentially unchanged. On the other hand, if the ingot is permitted to cool very slowly, the proportions of phases continue to adjust toward the room temperature equilibrium ratio. To produce lathe cut powder, an annealed ingot of alloy is placed in a milling machine or in a lathe and is fed into a cutting tool. The chips removed are often needle-like and some manufacturers reduce the chip size by ball milling. Once the alloy ingot has been reduced to lathe cut segments, many manufacturers perform some type of surface treatment of the particles. So, how this surface treatment of the particle is done and why it is done, that we will see after learning about manufacturing of spherical alloy. Manufacturing Spherical Alloy In this process, desired elements are melted together, to form molten alloy. Then, the liquid metal is atomized in an environment, into fine spherical droplets of metal. Here atomized means, an atomizing process, whereby a spray of tiny drops is allowed to solidify in an inert gas or a liquid, for this process generally argon gas is used. So after the liquid metal is sprayed, under high pressure of inert gas, through a fine crack in a crucible into a large chamber. If the droplets solidify, before hitting the surface, the spherical shape is maintained. Depending on the difference in the surface energy of molten alloy, and inert gas, 
the alloy may be spherical or somewhat irregular. Freshly cut alloy sets more promptly, than aged particles, but some aging of alloy, is desirable to improve the shelf life of product. The aging is related to relief of stress in the particles, during the cutting of the ingot. At room temperature, the residual stress is relived over a period of a week, or a month. The alloy particles are aged, by subjecting them to a controlled temperature of 60 to 100 degrees Celsius, for 1 to 6 hours. Treatment of the alloy particles with acid has been a manufacturing practice for many years. Amalgams made from acid-washed powders tend to be more reactive, than those made from unwashed powders. For better understanding, you can see difference between lath-cut and spherical alloy. Here you can see that lath-cut alloy require more mercury as compared to the spherical alloy, that is why spherical alloys are preferred because less mercury content is desirable into the set dental amalgam. Because of the irregular shape of the lath-cut alloy particles, lath-cut alloy requires more condensation force than spherical alloy. Higher condensation pressure is required to minimize porosity and to express mercury from lathe-cut amalgam, which can give higher compressive strength to set amalgam and for applying more condensation force, it is required to use smaller condenser point for lath cut alloy, because smaller diameter of the condensed force apply more pressure than larger diameter condenser point. In lath cut alloy more efforts are required for achieving smooth carving surfaces, because of the irregular shape of the alloy particles, whereas, in spherical alloy it's easier to do carving and burnishing. Spherical alloy is weak in proximal areas as compared to lath cut alloys. Now, before understanding amalgamation reaction, we need to remember all the metallurgical phases of amalgam. Depending on the composition of an alloy, and degree of solubility of the materials in each other, many intermetallic compounds are formed. These are termed as phases of amalgam. The symbols, and stoichiometry of phases, involved in the set dental amalgam are given here. These phases are named with Greek letters. Silver and tin forms beta phase. Silver and tin also forms gamma phase. Silver and mercury forms gamma 1 phase. Tin and mercury forms gamma-2 phase. Copper and tin forms epsilon phase. Copper and tin also forms eta phase. You have to remember all these phases, for understanding the setting reaction. The setting reactions of dental amalgam alloy, with mercury are usually described by the metallurgical phases. Body-centered cubic gamma-1 has mercury to silver ratio, of 3 gem 2. While hexagonal gamma 2 phase, has mercury tin ratio of 1 gem 6. Majority of the mercury in said amalgam, is in the gamma 1 phase, and minority is in gamma 2 phase. And, 30% of said amalgam, is unreacted gamma phase particles. When the alloy is mixed with mercury, three phases occur in case of the low copper alloy particles. First gamma phase, which is silver tin alloy phase, and this phase is strongest with least corrosion. Second is gamma 1 phase, which consists of, mercury reacting with silver, and it is not as strong as gamma phase. Gamma 2 phase consists of, mercury reacting with tin. It's weak phase, and it tends to corrode easily. Amalgamation occurs when mercury contacts the surface of the silver tin alloy particles. When a powder is triturated, the silver and tin dissolve into mercury. At the same time, 
mercury diffuses into the alloy particles. Here you can see the basic reaction, which occurs in low copper lath cut alloy. Here, when trituration process begins, gamma that is Ag3Sn, reacts with mercury, and it forms gamma 1, that is Ag2Hg3, plus gamma 2, that is Sn8Hg, and we can also found unreacted gamma particles, that is Ag3Sn into the set matrix, that is because, we are using mercury alloy ratio of 1 gem 1, so mercury is insufficient, to wet all the alloy particles, and some amount of unreacted gamma particle remains, which will form the core of the set amalgam. So, as you can see, at the end of the reaction, gamma 1, gamma 2 and unreacted gamma particles are found in the set amalgam. Here into this first picture, you can see that, as the reaction starts, silver and tin diffuses into the mercury, from the silver tin alloy. The mercury has a limited solubility for silver, and tin. Solubility of silver in mercury, is 0.035% by weight, and solubility of tin in mercury is 0.6% by weight. Because the solubility of silver in mercury is much lower than that of tin, the gamma 1 phase precipitate first, and gamma 2 phase precipitates later. Here into the second picture, you can see that gamma 1 crystals are formed surrounding the unreacted silver tin alloy particles, which will form core of the set matrix. Later on there will be formation of gamma-2 crystals, and after the reaction completes, you can found gamma, gamma-1, and gamma-2 phases, in set amalgam. The physical properties of the hardened amalgam, depend on the relative percentages of each of the microstructure phases. The more unconsumed silver tin particles, that are retained in the final structure, the strongest the amalgam. The weakest component is the gamma 2 phase, the hardness of gamma 2 is approximately 10%, of the hardness of gamma 1. This phase is also the least stable phase, in corrosive environment, and may suffer corrosion attack, especially in crevices of the restorations. In general, gamma and pure gamma-1 phases, are stable in oral environment. However, gamma-2 in amalgam, does contain small amounts of tin, which can be lost in a corrosive environment. Now let's understand, setting reaction in high copper alloy. There are two types of high copper alloy. An admixed alloy powder, and single composition alloy powder. Both types contain more than 6 weight percent copper. In single composition alloy powder, each particle has the same chemical composition. Therefore they are called single composition alloys. Whereas, Admixed alloy is a mixture spherical silver copper eutectic alloy particles, and lathe cut low copper amalgam alloy particles. Here in spherical silver copper eutectic alloy, silver is 71.9 weight percent, and copper is 28.1 weight percent. The total copper content in admixed alloys, ranges from approximately 9 weight percent to 20 weight percent. The silver copper particles, as well as the silver tin particles, probably act as strong fillers in amalgam, thereby strengthening the amalgam matrix. When mercury reacts with an admixed powder, an initial reaction gamma 1 and gamma 2 phases forms, plus unreacted gamma particles as well as unreacted silver copper particles remains. Later on gamma 2, which was formed in the initial reaction, reacts with the silver-copper eutectic alloy, 
and forms eta phase. So, in the final set amalgam, eta phase and gamma 1 phase forms an unreacted silver tin particles, as well as unreacted silver copper particles remains in the core of the set matrix. Here in the picture you can see that, when mercury reacts with an admixed powder, silver dissolves into the mercury, from the silver copper alloy particles, and both silver and tin dissolve into the mercury, from the silver tin alloy particles. The tin in solution, diffuses to the surfaces of the silver copper alloy particles, and reacts with the copper, to form the eta phase, which is Cu6SN5. Layer of eta crystals, forms around unconsumed silver copper alloy particles. The eta layer, on silver copper alloy particles, also contains some gamma-1 crystals. The gamma-1 phase, forms simultaneously with the eta phase, and surrounds both the eta-covered silver copper spherical alloy particles, and the silver tin lathe cut alloy particles. Same as in the low copper amalgams, gamma-1 is the matrix phase, that is, the phase that binds the unconsumed alloy particles together. Note that, the gamma-2 phase has been eliminated in this reaction. The gamma-2 phase actually forms at the same time as eta phase, but is later replaced by it. Some set admixed amalgams do contain gamma-2 phase, although the percentage is less than that in low copper amalgams. Success of the admixed amalgams, has led to the development of another type of high copper alloy. Unlike admixed alloy powders, each particle of these alloy powders, has the same chemical composition. Therefore they are called single composition alloys. Alloy of this type contains 60 weight percent of silver, 27 weight percent of tin, and 13 weight percent of copper. Copper content in various single composition alloys, ranges from 13 weight percent to 30 weight percent. Small amounts of indium or palladium, are included in some of the currently marketed single composition alloys. When triturated with mercury, there will be formation of the gamma-1 phase, and eta phase, and also there will be presence of, unreacted gamma and epsilon phase. As you can see into the picture, when single composition alloy is triturated with mercury, silver, and tin, from the silver tin phases dissolve in mercury. Here, very little copper dissolves in mercury. The gamma-1 crystals grow, and forms a matrix that binds together the partially dissolved alloy particles. The eta crystals are found as meshes of rod-like crystals, at the surfaces of alloy particles, as well as dispersed in the matrix. These crystals are much larger, than the eta crystals found in the reaction layers, surrounding the silver-copper particles in admixed amalgams.